Welcome. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at various types of bracketing symbols in addition to building tables and arrays. One of the most commonly used types of bracketing symbols are parentheses, and if we want to use parentheses, we can simply type them using the keyboard. For example, if we want the quantity x plus 1, we just type the parentheses in math mode, and when we build our file, we see the quantity x plus 1. Likewise, if we want to use square brackets, we'll just type them on the keyboard. So we might have 3, and then in square brackets, 2 plus, and then parentheses, the quantity x plus 1, close my parentheses, close my bracket, and close math mode. If we build that, we've got um, our parentheses, we also have our set of square brackets. If we want to use curly brackets, okay, so for example, if we have the set of three elements A, B, C, and I build this, we don't actually see the curly brackets displayed. And that's because the curly brackets are reserved symbols used for coding in LaTeX. If we want to display a curly bracket, we have to go back and put a backslash in front of it. And that's true for the opening bracket as well as the closing bracket. If we put the backslash in front of the bracket, uh, then the compiler knows to actually display that symbol. So now when I build it, it should show me those curly brackets. And there they are around our set ABC. Likewise, the dollar symbol is reserved for coding to put something in math mode. So if we want to actually display a dollar symbol, it's not enough to just type it. We would have to put a backslash in front of it. So for example, um, backslash dollar sign twelve dollars and fifty five cents. and that displays our $12.55 with our dollar symbol from putting the backslash in front of the symbol. If I have a tall object and I want to put parentheses around it, then it's not enough to just type the parentheses on the keyboard. It's going to look kind of funny. For example, if we have three times the quantity so if I just type my parentheses, and then in here let's put in the fraction two-fifths. So backslash frac two-fifths. And I build. It looks a little bit funny because the parentheses are too short. I would like the parentheses to expand to the height of the object inside. And we can do that if we go back to where we inserted the parenthesis. In front of it, we put backslash, and then either left or right. So for the opening parenthesis, I would do backslash left. And for the closing parenthesis, I would put backslash right. Let's rebuild that. And now you can see that the parentheses have, in fact, expanded to accommodate the height of the object. Now we can do the same thing for square brackets and curly brackets as well. So I'm going to just copy and paste this code, and instead of backslash left parenthesis, I'll use backslash left square bracket and backslash right square bracket. Okay, so our square brackets have expanded in height to accommodate the size of the object inside. And we can do the same for our curly braces. Now remember with the curly braces we have to put a backslash in front of the curly brace as well. And there we go. absolute value works the same way. So we could have the absolute value of x, and if we just type it on the keyboard, we're using that pipe, k 
key, absolute value of x, we don't need to insert back, backslash left or backslash right um, if we have a short object. But if we have something larger inside, like a fraction, So let's say we have x over x plus 1. And we can see it would look much better if those absolute value symbols uh, were taller. So again, we'll go back in front of the symbol and we'll do a backslash left for the opening symbol and a backslash right in front of the closing symbol. And that has now expanded in height. Now every time you use a left bracketing symbol, the compiler is going to expect to find a matching right bracketing symbol. But sometimes we only want to use a single bracket. If you use the code for a left bracketing symbol and you simply leave off the right bracketing symbol, you're going to run into an error when you try and build your file. Or vice versa, if you leave off a left bracketing symbol and you only uh, put in the code for the right bracketing symbol, again, you're going to run into an error when you try and build your file. But there is a way to work around that. Let's say, for example, we want to use a left curly bracket, so backslash left and then backslash curly bracket and we're going to wrap that around x squared and so then um, the matching curly bracket would be backslash right backslash right curly bracket and then we could come out of math mode but suppose we only want to show the left hand bracket and not the right so what we, we would do is delete the actual symbol. We'll leave the slash right, but we'll replace the character with a period. And this time when we build, it simply won't display that right hand bracket. This will work to hide left hand brackets as well. For example, slash left, let's do an absolute value, around the fraction dy over dx and then we'll do the right hand absolute value symbol and on that right hand absolute value symbol I'm going to use a subscript of x equals 1 so this is something you might see in calculus. Now if we compile it, it's going to show both the left and right absolute value symbols. But this notation that I'm trying to write here actually isn't absolute value. We want that right vertical bar, but not the left. So to hide that left vertical bar, I just replace that character with a period. And now when I build, it will not display the left hand bracket. Next we're going to look at how to build a table in LaTeX. To start a table we use the command backslash begin tabular. And notice um, a couple of things. After tabular we have another set of curly braces and it's looking for us to insert some kind of argument there and then we also have a matching end tag, end tabular. So begin tabular uh, to start our table and end tabular to indicate that we are finished with the table. Now in this second set of curly brackets we have to indicate how many columns we want in our table. And We're not going to type a number, we're actually going to indicate whether we want our entries centered or left justified or right justified. I want my entries centered so I'm going to type a C and this would give me a table with one column. If I type another C I'm going to get a table with two columns. 
let's make a table with six columns. So I'm going to type six C's, and that means in each of those columns, the entries are going to be centered. Now, as I type my entries, when I want to move into the next column, I use an ampersand. Let's put an X in our first column, and I'm going to put that in math mode. So just type X. And then in my um, next columns, I want to type the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So X is in my first column. Now to move to the second column, I use the ampersand. Then I type the next entry, which is a 1, then an ampersand, 2, ampersand, 3, ampersand, 4, ampersand, 5. Now the spaces I'm typing in the code aren't going to show up as spaces in the document. It just helps me to kind of organize the code as I'm writing it. You can insert spaces. You can see that I did that up here just to kind of separate the code for the fraction. That absolutely has no effect on the output. It's not going to insert spaces in the output. It just helps me um, visually to organize the code. So now I have my six columns, x, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. When we want to go to the next row, we have to type two backslashes. This forces a line break and takes me to the next row of my table. So in the next row, instead of an x in the first column, I want f of x. And since that's not a tall object, I don't need to use expanded parentheses. And then I'll fill in uh, values for the rest of the columns in that second row. So let's do 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now let's build our document and take a look at our table. Now our entries are all nicely aligned, but it doesn't really look like a table. It would look better if I had some lines separating my rows and columns. Let's see how we can accomplish that. The command backslash hline will insert a horizontal line and where I've placed it it's going to insert a horizontal line after the first row and before the second row. So if we build that then we have this nice um, separator. If I want vertical lines separating my columns then I have to come up here where I've defined my columns and use the uh, pipe key on the keyboard and that should insert a vertical bar. Now it's looking more like a table. And if I wanted to, I could insert vertical bars in between each of the columns. If I wanted a border around the table, I could go back where I've defined my columns and put a ver vertical bar before the first column, after the second column. I can include a horizontal line before the first row, end the second row, and then put a horizontal line after the second row. And then our table appears to have a border around it. Finally, we're going to take a look at how to make an equation array. Arrays are very useful when you want to line objects up at a certain location and we often do this when we're showing our steps in solving an equation. We want everything to be lined up at the equal sign. So to begin with we're going to use the symbol backslash begin and then for equation it's abbreviated EQN and we see this um, recommending the rest of the code for us begin equation array and then we have a matching end equation array command. When we use equation array we're automatically in math mode so it's not necessary to type dollar symbols. We're automatically in math mode. So we'll begin our array with the equation 5x squared minus 9 
is equal to x plus 3. To move on to the next line, I'm going to use double backslash. And my next step is going to be 4x squared equals 12. Again, to end that line and move to the next line, double backslash. And then we have x squared equals 3. And we have x is approximately, I don't want to use an equal symbol here. Um, I want to say approximately. So the code for the approximately symbol is backslash approx. x is approximately. And then I want the plus or minus symbol. That's backslash pm. And the value 1.732. So let's see what happens when we try and build this. Okay, we have all of our equations, but notice they're not all lined up vertically at the equal sign. They're all justified right, which is not what I want. Also, as I scroll over to the right, I see that these equations, each of the lines, are numbered. When you're working in, in an array, um, by default it's automatically going to give you line numbers, which is useful uh, for reference if you're writing a paper and you have to refer to a certain step in your problem. The first thing I want to change about this is I want all of these things to line up at the equal sign. So we're going to go back into the code and we're going to wrap the equal sign character with ampersands. So one in front and one after. And that's going to tell the compiler that we want to align these equations with that symbol. And I'll do the same for my approximately equal to symbol. Okay, and we'll build. Now those are all lined up at the equal signs. If I don't like the line numbering and I want to hide that, that's very easy to do. We just go into the command begin equation array and then also the end equation array and after the equation array, after that y there, we're going to type an asterisk. So we'll do that in the opening command and the closing command. And now when I build, it has hidden those line numbers from view. That wraps up our tutorial on bracketing symbols, tables, and arrays.